What's up everyone? In this video I'm going to show you what's in my menu bar and talk about what each tool does. A lot of people avoid interacting with their menu bar, but with all the apps that are now fighting for a spot at the top right of every Mac user's screen, I think it's good to know just what can be done with the menu bar. So first and foremost, I have about 12 apps that I like to have readily available in my menu bar. Typically this would be too many to fit especially if you have a MacBook that cuts into the space with a notch. So in order to organize all 12, I use an app called Bartender 4. Bartender goes for $16, and what it allows me to do is to have three different layers of menu bar. There's my most used icons on the default menu bar. Then if I click the three dots here, I can see the hidden menu bar. And then you can see if I go to the actual Bartender app, I can see the menu bar items I've chosen to permanently hide. Up next is Hand Mirror. I do a lot of Zoom calls, and it's actually very convenient to be able to just click the Hand Mirror icon to see a quick preview of what my camera sees. I didn't think I would use it much as I would typically just launch Photo Booth to check myself out, but it really is a great little tool to have on hand. Next we have the most expensive menu bar item of the bunch, SoundSource. SoundSource gives you features that should definitely have been baked into macOS in the first place. So let's say I have Safari open and I'm also trying to play Hades in the background, and let's say I'm also on a Zoom call. So I can click the sound source icon and it gives me fine-tuned controls for the audio of every app I have open. So I want to keep playing Hades, but don't want to go to the menus to turn the game sound off. So I choose the slider for Hades and drop it to zero. Now I can still hear the zoom and still hear Safari. Let's say I'm in full screen now in zoom and Safari is playing music in the background and I don't want to completely mute the music, I just want to turn it down. I can select the sound source button and choose to bring Safari audio down to 50%. Additionally, I can choose to have Zoom audio come through my headphones and Safari sounds come out of the laptop. It's really cool and gives you instant access to everything sound related on your Mac. Next is Copy Clip 2. Copy Clip is what's called a clipboard manager. Typically on a computer, you can only copy and paste one thing at a time. With Copy Clip, you can copy multiple items and then click on the icon or hit the keyboard shortcut and it'll hold everything you've copied to be pasted later. So like if I see information online that I want to save, sometimes I just copy it. Then later I can paste it wherever I want. Next is TG Pro. As a Mac gamer, my laptop gets really, really hot. And what's frustrating is that when I'm playing a graphics intensive game like Rise of the Tomb Raider, for example, and the Mac is over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the fans still only run at about 30%. Now, for the average Mac user, there's pretty much no situation where you should mess with the Mac's fans. But if messing with your fans is something you want to do, TG Pro lets you do it. So this next app is called Wi-Fi. Just kidding. And this next one is called Side Notes. It's my preferred note-taking app. I find Apple Notes to be a bit clunky and hard to navigate sometimes. Don't get me wrong, I love Apple Notes. But when I really need to just jot down a quick thought, being able to just hit command shift space to get to my sticky notes is awesome. It lives to the right side of the screen and can be summoned on a moment's notice. Another great feature I feel like macOS should have built in. These are the ones that I still use every day but don't need right there at the front. First we have Better Touch Tool. I use Better Touch Tool to create all sorts of actions and shortcuts for my trackpad. 
For example, I have it so that when I force click the top right corner of my trackpad, Siri activates. Or when I force click the bottom left corner, it opens Launchpad. I made a whole video on BTT that you can check out in the description. Up next is Mac Updater. Mac Updater is great. It scans all the applications on your Mac to check if they need updating. It's simple and it works perfectly. I like to keep everything as up to date as possible, and sometimes apps don't go out of their way to let you know they need updating. With Mac Updater, that changes. Next is Parallels Toolbox. Parallels Toolbox is a weird one. It's basically a collection of lots of little applications. I have options to download a video from the web, or hide the icons on my desktop, or set a timer, or record the screen even. There's lots of little tools here, and while the $20 a year price is ridiculous, I do find myself coming back to use this very often. Last we have Al Dente, which basically gives you fine-tuned controls of how your battery charges. To be honest, it's probably best to just use one's laptop normally and not try to micromanage charging it. But I'm kind of weird and I really like to try to keep my battery between 30 and 70% at all times. Apparently this may help the longevity of the battery and cut down on battery cycles. Anyway, it's a neat little tool. I have it set so that it won't let the Mac charge past 70% even if it's plugged in and closed. Use this with caution. So that's all I got. To be honest, when buying all of these, the price really does add up. If you're looking for the bare minimum to up your productivity, I'd recommend going for Hand Mirror, Al Dente Free Version, Copy Clip 2, or any other clipboard manager. And then if you really need a sticky note solution, go for Side Notes. If not, don't get it, and save your money for Sound Source instead. It really is my favorite menu bar tool.